Only this percentage of people who watch are subscribed. So subscribe now and never miss out. Enjoy the video. Humans. Male. Open. Got. Gonna. It. Hello. Some. That's an intro. <laughs> and you can't prove that it isn't one. Uh, dear, your dinosaurs are wrong. This is from... John and Cat. I don't know where in. Oh, Colorado. Uh, long time watchers, first time submitters. My wife and I have both been STEM educators and really appreciate your work and outreach. We checked online and noticed that you didn't seem to have a Cryolophosaurus. We hope this is a good jumping off point to discuss this and related genera, as well as the ecosystem in which they live. We also appreciate the fact that it was named for the geologists that found the exposed bones and alerted the paleontologist who later led the excavation, referring to the specific name, uh, uh, Elioti. We found this model on the Briar website, which has traditionally done a very accurate job with horse models. Obviously, this is a departure for them. Okay. Uh, we'd like to know how reasonable their representation is. Though, it is. though its pompadour crest seems well attested, we like to think of this and some other Jurassic theropods as Roostosaurus. Sincerely, John and Cat. Well, now I'm interested to see what a company that makes horses makes of a dinosaur. Oh. It's, uh, got, got a big old keratin shield on the top of the face there. That's neat. Pronated hands. Not crazy about the teeth poking out of the mouth with the, uh, with the mouth closed. The, the way that, so you shouldn't have told me that it's a horse toy manufacturer because now I see horse in like the way they've posed the neck and, and like the way that they've sculpted the head. Like it's not, it's not aggressively horse-like, but now I'm seeing horse in it. But thank you, John and Cat. This one is from, I don't know who, in Indiana. I don't know whom. It's from Fembragon. They wrote a little bit. Hello, Stephen and Liz of Your Dinosaurs Are Wrong. I've been aware of your channel for quite a while now, but only recently became a serious follower and patron. I greatly enjoy your content, and it is my pleasure and a little excitement to send you my first fan mail. All of the figures inside are yours to keep. I hope they make fun additions to the roster. Since people have talked about interest in a marine reptile episode someday, the first figure I've included is a classic Carnegie Mosasaur from 1990. It's obviously dated now, but it sells a lot of charm in its own right. I don't know how I feel about something from 1990 being dated. Let's see if I can find it. This must be it. <laughs> can I... There we go. That's... I'm pretty sure we had a better picture of this animal than this in 1990, but yeah, I see what you mean by it being a classic depiction. I like it. Uh, much older than the Carnegie is the assortment of MPC toys I've put together for you. These toys should date back to the early 1960s, provided their originals. Some of these, especially the non-dinos, should be new additions to the general list, and at least a few have also had notable revisions in more recent years. So if a Paleozoic, Cenozoic episode is ever voted on, these might make good candidates. Okay, so that's this bag of them. Oh, it might not be a bag. It is a bag, okay. Oh, there's a lot. But he included a packing slip. Thank goodness. Ah, it's one of those guys. 
These are all shiny to some degree or other. Oh, are they color coded by era? No, they're not. Hey, it's one of these that I want to call Iguanodon, but I apparently are actually supposed to be Allosaurus. Oh, and Agliptodon. And whatever that is. I don't know what this animal is. It's some kind of, it looks like a Paleozoic animal. Yeah, these are neat. Oh, huh. It's rare that you find a, a pterosaur toy where it's walking quadrupedally, at least from the early 1960s, allegedly. Neat. Oh, and they got the classic Smilodon pose. Um. I know you already have Giganotosaurus represented in your collection, but if I recall correctly, the ones we currently have, are, or you currently have, are actually quite nice. So, I'm including a figure you can properly tear apart if you end up doing an episode for Giga in the future. Uh, I apologize, as this toy is technically a knockoff of another company's model, but once you have a chance to examine it, you may understand why I didn't want to spend too much on the design. Well, now I gotta know. You are right, by the way. Both of the Giganotosaurus we've been sent are quite good. That's one of them. Hang on, I gotta read ahead. So I had to check that this is in fact supposed to be Giganotosaurus. Because I wasn't, I wasn't totally sure. But um, I, I, I sympathize with you not wanting to spend much money on it. I don't know, it's, it's better than some you see. It's at least standing correctly and it's, that's, that's about all I can, oh well, its hands aren't pronated or at least they're only partially pronated. It's weird, it's weirdly wrinkly on the, on the throat area. Yes, useful. As I, I don't remember if I've observed this on video before, but the best episodes seem to be the ones with the worst toys. <laughs> um, the last toy is purely for laughs. It's a toy made by one of the third party companies that pop up across different sites. Some of those figures are pretty decent, but this ambiguous Silurosaur Manoraptoran ended up labeled as an Ornithomimus. I have no idea, as of writing this, what they must have been referencing. Please enjoy taking your own gander at the toy's true identity. Uh, thank you again for your delightful contributions to the YouTube Paleosphere. I look forward to each new episode. Sincerely yours, Fem Brogan. Well, thank you. Hmm. You said this is an Ornithomimosaur? Oh, Ornithomimus. Huh. That's, its legs kind of work. There we go. They, well, that's weird. You usually don't see the hands posed correctly, but then the wings not covering the hands. That's, that's an interesting choice. And obviously the head is completely not an Ornithomimus head. That's... I, th I think that's like a Jurassic Park Velociraptor head, pretty much. I like the the Foghorn Leghorn covering, coloring. But thank you, Fembrogan. Next is from Monswine in Mon uh, uh, the French part of Canada, Quebec. Hello, your dinosaurs are wrong crew. Hope you are all doing well. I am sending you some more pop culture dinosaurs to round out your collection, which I am told include 
a Cheezosaurus Rex, and of course a Barney. Uh, apologies again for the size and weight of that monster. Yeah, that was that was him. So I, I actually can't find our Cheezosaurus Rex. It seems to have been lost in a move at some point. Um, the first of these is from the 1993 Amblimation film We're Back, A Dinosaur Story. I couldn't find any toys from this film, so here are some photos from a press kit that was sent out to newspapers and periodicals for printing alongside ads and reviews for the movie. Well, now I gotta see. Oh, wow! I want to open the bag without destroying the bag. There's the opening. Huh. This movie... I, I really liked this movie when I was a little kid, but revisiting it as an adult... Um, I couldn't get very far into it, because it is, it is a lot weirder than I remember. <laughs> and I kind of, I, I wouldn't say I hate the dinosaurs' character designs, but I, they're not my favorite. <laughs> There's just something, especially the, um, where is he? The Triceratops. Just, there's something about him that just I, I do not like at all. This first still, though, they like added a bunch of texture to them that isn't present in the movie. That must be like the poster version. Back in the bag. Um, uh, da -da -da. As an animator and fan of character animation, it's my hope you enjoy these stills from this bizarre childhood favorite of mine. Each of the scenes is accompanied with a little description of the characters and events involved. Next, I've sent you an Earl Sinclair figurine from the 1991 to 94 sitcom Dinosaurs. It was incorrectly labeled on eBay as being from We're Back. Um, Earl is a self-proclaimed Megalosaurus. I didn't know there were to- I guess I shouldn't be surprised, but I- I didn't know there were toys for dinosaurs. Wait, yes I did. I think we had, like, a pu a hand puppet of the baby from dinosaurs. I like that the only point of articulation is between his shirt and his lower body. He can just do this. <laughs> for some reason. Um, I've also sent you a wind-up little foot from a 1997 Burger King prize. It still seems to work. However, I'm not sure if his walk cycle compares favor favorably with the conclusions of Lalan Sack and Falkingham 2022, which analyzed sauropod gait from trackways. No, nah, that's about right. <laughs> I have no idea. Um, those names sound familiar, but I do not remember the details of that paper. Uh, da -da -da. There's also a Reptar from the cartoon Rugrats. Despite being a clear nod to Godzilla, he's described as being a mutated green Tyrannosaurus. He's not sure of the origin of this toy, but it being from 1998 suggests it probably coincided with the release of the first Rugrats movie. Yeah, that would track. I was definitely a fan of Reptar. I don't remember... I don't remember when I first encountered Rugrats. I couldn't have been that young. 
I think I might have seen toys of it before the show. Uh, and, f and finally, so as not to completely waste the show's time. Oh, well, you weren't. Uh, I've sent in a real dinosaur here in the form of a Jurassic World Mononychus for you to tear open. Marvel at its many inaccuracies and the general suggestion of feathers on the tail and arms. Oh, yeah. There's a slightly newer model that's gray with a blue head and a red throat, but this one caught my eye first. I hope you and the fans enjoy it. Thank you for working so hard on a show that it is my pleasure to support. Mons Line. Well, thank you. I'm not going to open the package because that would be an ordeal, but... They at least acknowledge that it had feathers, which is more than they do for a lot of their animals. I mean, it's Mononychus, and it does have one claw in its hand, so I guess, uh... I, I guess it's what it says on the tin. <laughs> Next is from, ooh, this is from Julian in California, and he has drawn us a picture on the envelope of a, it's kind of hard to see, but we've got a, um, a chilling Spinosaurus halfway submerged in the water, just vibing. Come on. There we go. Dear, your dinosaurs are wrong. I was so happy to stumble across your channel. You have really reawakened my interest in dinos and the Earth's history in general. I wanted to send you this odd toy I found at the grocery store. The tail design makes me think they were going for a dimorphodon, but it looks all kinds of messed up to me. What do you think? Sincerely, Julian. Um, hope you, P.S. Hope you like the drawing on the envelope. Spinosaurus is my absolute favorite. I do like the drawing on the envelope. Huh. It's... Y I'm inclined to think that's a dimorphodon. I can't, like, angle it so that y'all can see the whole thing at once, because it's kind of contorted up. It... The, um... The face reminds me of the dimorphodon in that animated Jurassic Park show they have whose name escapes me. But they made them look kind of like a T-Rex head on a pterosaur, and this seems to be in that same vein. Wait, does the tail... No, it's just a separate piece. So they went to the effort of having the weird fifth toe... or... Is it a toe bone? I'm not even sure. Dimorphodon has these things that seem to attach to the wing membrane but they don't have it attaching to the wing membrane in this toy. So why even include it? Really bizarre. I kind of like the coloring though. The brown and green with stripes on the tail. But thank you, Julian. Next we have, uh, this is just drop shipped. Oh, there's a note. This is from... Michelle. Uh, I don't think you guys have a Cryolophosaurus yet. Well, you're too late. We just got one. <laughs> uh, it's a cool, underrated dinosaur. Well, thank you, Michelle. Wait, is this the same one? Hold on. That's the same one. So they're collecte. Collecte. Collecta. I think I had this problem last time trying to figure out how to say this company's name. I can't think of a joke. Yeah, I got nothing. 
Thank you for the Cryolophosauri. So, no, it's just Cryolophosaurus if it's individual animals. Next, this is from Andrew in Alberta. Greetings, your dinosaurs are wrong, folks. Keep up the great work with your YouTube channel. Your videos are entertaining and informative. These dinosaur toys are yours to keep and make a video on if you choose. We've got, oh, we've got paper. We've got a Dr. Steve Hunter's Hypsilophodon. Yeah, I don't think we had a Hypsilophodon before, uh, yet. I, it's kind of hard to see since it's in the box, but I, I, I like the slit pupil eyes. And there's a... Oh, Augustinia. Am I saying that right? Augustinia? The, the taco sauropod. I've never heard of this brand before. Or, well, Geo War. Oh, so Dr. Steve Hunter's is the, uh, like, line, not the brand. Okay. <laughs> yeah, thank you, Andrew. This one is from Sarah in a country that speaks German, presumably Germany. Dear Stephen, dear Liz, I recently discovered your dinosaurs are wrong and instantly fell in love with the show. It brought back both my appreciation for dinosaurs and nostalgia about all the old toys I owned as a kid. Sadly, I sold most of them on flea markets when I was younger and all but two of the remaining ones recently via eBay. But I really wanted to send you some of the weird ones from my childhood, so I searched through eBay and bought a box of, uh, with a weird set of dinosaurs more or less like the ones I owned. So here you are. You can keep all of those, and I apologize for sending you some genera you already discussed on the show, either on this or on the old channel, but they were part of that set and I had no reason to keep them. The only one I previously owned is the little golden Triceratops. I called him Goldie. Uh, I would appreciate if you can send him back to me. I'm gonna try and find Goldie now. Oh, they're all individually wrapped. Oh, that's going to be an undertaking. Okay, I'll, I'll, I'll read the letter then. I also sent you a set of dinosaur buttons with different motives and pictures from the dinosaur statues in Nagoya Zoo, Nagoya, Japan. Oh, is that what these are? Okay. And there's a list of what the figures appear to be. Uh... I would suggest you look at them in the above order, as I'm sure number 18 is the most hilarious. Well, that's that's setting some expectations. Oh, the, oh, the little individual parcels are numbered. Okay. Uh, I consider to become your patron and may have already by the time that passage, package crossed the Atlantic Ocean. I'm still unsure what tier, though. Hope your channel stays alive and you are all doing well. Until then, sincerest greetings and best wishes, Sarah. Oh, and there's a strange picture of a Tyrannosaurus slide in Hamamatsu Flower Park. And a, a drawing of a Gorg... I, I can't read that one. Gorgotops? Whatever this animal is, it's a drawing of. But there's a Tyrannosaurus slide, which, I mean, that looks great. I wish we'd had one of those in my neighborhood growing up. Um, right, but we got a whole bunch of dinosaurs to unpack, huh? So the Dilophosaurus doesn't want to stand up, but uh, we, we, we just went ahead and unpacked everything. Goldie the Triceratops reminds me more of a 
rhinoceros beetle than of a triceratops, but it is cute. Um, you're right, there's a lot of animals we already had, though this one's kind of funny because it's... It's just this guy, but smaller. <laughs> You're right, though. Number 18 are the weird ones. We've got this... ...ghost... ...triceratops? With, like, a weirdly broad... ...nose? Uh... And we've got... ...some kind of duck-billed dinosaur, but with two humps on its back for unknown reasons. We've got the blue version of our first Solidosaurus toy. And we've got, oh, um, one of these. I don't even know what to call these, but I had one when I was a kid and I've never seen one in this color before. They're usually uh, yellow and red. Wait, what's number 14 is a... Oh, it's supposed to be Edmontonia. Okay, I thought it was a turtle. I like how pig-nosed it is. It's cute. Well, that's a lot, but thank you very much, Sarah. I didn't even look at the, the other enclosures. There's some... I can't tell if these aged poorly or if they just were never very good to start with, but there's some sculptures of, of dinosaurs. Next, this is from Dean in Illinois. Dear Steve, I discovered your dinosaurs are wrong a couple months ago, and I binge-watched everything you've made in about a week, and occasionally I get my partner to watch them. You've reignited re the little intrigued kid in me who watched dinosaur documentaries and always wondered what the amazing animals the bones gave hints of. Uh, recently, a friend came up from Texas to here in Chicago, and her sister has always loved dinosaurs. We got souvenirs to the detriment of our wallets at the Field Museum in Chicago. Hey! for her and I recommended the show and she really loves it. I also got a good look at the Herrerasaurus skeleton's hip bone and bought a toy to send in for the show. I know Baryonyx episode is eventually going to come out so I figured I'd try to contribute to the episode or a mailbag episode. I left the tag on as proof that it was intended as Baryonyx and not some chimera. I would like to have it returned if possible. Keep up the amazing work and as spaced as your episodes are, the wait is worth it for the incredible quality. Oh thank you. Uh, Maria and Joe. Oh, so I had the name wrong from the box. My bad. Oh, wow. This is bigger than I was picturing. <laughs> that's... That's quite a... Did you say it was Baryonyx? Yeah, that's quite a Baryonyx. Um, some decisions have been made in this sculpt. Oh, wow. That mouth opens really far, that's cool. Yeah, impressive. Thank you very much, Maria and Joe. Next is from somewhere in Canada. I really don't know how to start letters, so I guess I'll introduce myself. My name is Logan. I'm a 13-year-old artist. I've been watching your content for a while now, and I was wondering if you would critique some of my art so I can make it better. I've sent a drawing of an unfinished Tyrannosaurid size chart. By the time you get this, it will probably be done. I've also sent a pterosaur called Dark Ski... I can't pronounce... It's that new one. Ski... Skiathanch. Ski... I think it's Skiathanch. Um, I was going to send a Spinosaurus aegypticus, but it's always changing. <laughs> Fair. Uh, I also have two questions. 
Do you think Troodon could have been poisonous, or is it just a Jurassic Park thing? I'm gonna be honest, I didn't know Troodon was in Jurassic Park, but, um... The, to my knowledge, there's no more evidence of venom in that animal than in any of any other dinosaur. Uh, do I think Nanotyrannus is a separate species or a juvenile Tyrannosaurus? No comment. P.S. I really love your content. Well, thank you. I don't know how I feel about critiquing somebody's art, like, live. I think it's very nice. This is charismatic. I like the whiskers. If my hand would stop shaking. He said this is a unfinished Tyrannosaurid size chart. Well, I don't know which Tyrannosaurids you're representing. I'm guessing these are probably Tyrannosaurus, Albertosaurus, and I don't know what the second big one there is. Maybe Tarbosaurus? They look nice. They're a little slim, especially the big guys are probably a little slim for Tyrannosaurus. You usually see a little more chonk, but yeah, good work so far. Really nice to see somebody taking an interest in this. Uh, and thank you very much. We have, oh, doesn't say who from. Oh, oh, there's a lot, hang on. There we go. We've got some art and some correspondence. These are adorable. I, I really like this one. Um, hello, your dinosaurs are wrong. As is everyone who watches your channel, I'm a dinosaur enthusiast. I love studying your videos before drawing. Your observations are thorough and meticulous, and I'm more than certain you help out countless artists looking to paint some life into these fantastic forgotten animals. Plus, your awkward and goofy personality is so charming and funny, I laugh every episode despite there not being a joke. Well, thank you. Um, to save your poor shelf some space but still leave my mark, I've sent you some stickers that... Oh, some stickers I made. They made these. Uh, da -da -da. Despite their cartooniness, I'm sure you'll be able to tell which is what. I hope you enjoy them. With much love, Sunflower. Well, thank you. I like the, uh, the, like, snooty expression on the, uh, I'm gonna say Lambiosaurus? But, yeah, the, the posture of the Iguanodont here is, is really cute. I'm afraid, I think your, your drawing got a little smudged in the mail, but this is some kind of Dromaeosaur. Yeah, thank you very much, Sunflower. This is some dino mail from Cormac in Massachusetts. M.A. is Massachusetts, right? I don't know. That's a lot of box for not a lot of stuff. Oh. So fragile, they, they reused a box. What's in here is not actually fragile. What was originally in that box is fragile. <laughs> that's, that's definitely a pterosaur. <laughs> we got correspondence. Is there a paper shortage on? We keep getting like little fragments. Um, hello, your dinosaurs are wrong. I really enjoy your videos and hope you enjoy the drawing I've sent. I've also sent a pterosaur figure that I believe is supposed to be Maardactylus. I'm not familiar with that one. M-A-A-R Dactylus. I don't... Yeah, I haven't heard of that. Um, I'm in eighth grade and do not have a favorite dinosaur because all of them are equally cool. That's a valid opinion. P.S. Could you do an episode on Ceratosaurus? If the patrons will it. Uh, from Cormac. Oh, come on. 
Here we see sexual dimorphism in Velociraptor, with the male having a display fan on his tail. Probably some kind of mating display going on here. Good work. Thank you, Cormac. Being that I don't know what animal this is supposed to be because I've never heard of it, um, I'm gonna guess that there's some issues with the toy nonetheless just because of how veiny the wing membranes are. <laughs> got that, got that maple leaf membrane. And we have, oh, there's, it's like mostly air, okay. Okay. This is from Sabrina in Ohio. I'm so sorry. Talk about not a lot in a lot of box. Hang on. Can I do it without knocking everything else over? I said without knocking everything else over. Okay. Okay, it's all good. It's all under control. <sighs> oh, these are cute. Um, Dear Your Dinosaurs Are Wrong, your videos have greatly inspired me to get back into dinosaurs and paleontology. I often play your videos when drawing dinosaurs so I can get them as accurate as possible. Enclosed are three prints I made in my art class this year, one of which is an attempt to replicate your logo, though sadly I couldn't get it to print the best. Uh, signed, Aaron. P.S. My art teacher helped package them and that's why they are in those frames. Also. If you would like to know more about what linoleum prints are, I drew a thing on the back of this to help explain. Post postscript, if you ever find yourself able to go on a road trip, I highly recommend you check, recommend checking out the Wyoming Dinosaur Center. It's a great museum that has dig site, tra dig site tours. Yeah, I've never made it out that way, but I, I would like to. <laughs> I like, I, I, I like the, the figures representing how linoleum printing works because they included a, a dinosaur. <laughs> but, like, we got the... We got the famous fire-breathing Parasaurolophus and some kind of Oviraptorosaur and a grumpy little Dromaeosaur and a sausage. And I love them. So how do I... Oh. Oh! That's really pretty. I assume this is an Archaeopteryx? That's a cool way to represent iridescence. Oh yeah, it's Urvogo. Oh, I'm holding it wrong. It's a portrait. Oh, and then in black. See, it looks good in black, too. Oh, it's multiple... I feel like I should be displaying them in, like, a grid pattern, so you can see the different forms. Oh, and that's the end. <laughs> yeah, good work! I don't want to damage them. Oh, come on. But thank you everyone for your art and your toys and your kind words and your continued support. And we'll see you next time.